This is exactly right. I'm Babs Gray, and my boyfriend recently found out how they combine grapes and apples, and he's really grappling with it. Oh, my God. Stupid. <laughs> stupid. Bad. Stupid. <laughs> Barb's dancing it Thank out. Thank you. I didn't write uh, it in the thing because I didn't want to ruin it for you guys. No, I'm glad. <laughs> uh, I'm Brandy Posey, and COVID is a hoagie. Mm-hmm. Ah? Instead of a hoax. It's a... Oh. oh. oh yeah. Gotcha. Less <laughs> less successful pun, whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm Jess Barker, and I'm hungry, but I'm tired of every food. Mm-hmm. And this is Lady to Lady. Can you keep a secret? Neither can we. Hello! We got Barbara Brandy and of course Big Tess. We got a show for everyone that's the fucking best. Come on, baby. It's time to hang out with your favorite ladies. Ladies and ladies. Ladies and ladies. Welcome to the show, everybody. We're so excited to have you here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, can I tell you guys that I'm drinking a smoothie I've been trying to get through for the Ooh. last two Ooh, hours it straight? Looks like I, poop. Yeah. I'm so close to it being done. Don't. I've got like a You know quarter. what? I'm here to tell you don't give up. Give up. <laughs> That's our no. main function in life. We're yeah. here to tell you give up. It's okay. okay. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate that. Yeah. It feels good to have been told just to quit something in this life. <laughs> um, let's bring on our guest. Oh, my God. We are so excited, so honored to have a drag mm-hmm. superstar join us on the podcast. You can check out her podcast, Race Chaser, and she actually has a comedy special that's out right now on Out TV. It's Alaska Thunderfuck! Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Can I do a joke intro? Oh my yes. God. You all did. Yes. Okay, we would love okay. it. Yes. Have you heard there you know everyone is starting an OnlyFans these days. It's true. Even this 180s band uh and and the the OnlyFans page is called Huey Lewis and the Nudes. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yes. You fit you fit right in there. Perfect Alaska. <laughs> Very funny. If only. I've been waiting for years to see Huey Lewis naked. You know, so it's only a matter of time. Everyone ends up on Cameo and OnlyFans, <laughs> and it's gonna happen. Yeah, I imagine. Absolutely. Yeah, you got to do the Cameo. I'm like, do you do the Cameo first or the OnlyFan? Which one would I knock out? I guess I would do my OnlyFans first when I first wake up. And then get dressed. They should combine it and make it a cami ho. I think that's what needs oh, to yeah. come out of this. Oh, very that. Yes, very absolutely. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I actually do. I want to do this. I tweeted about it, but I want to do an OnlyFans where they only it's one line. It's one picture and you just have one line at a time. So like oh. they have to experience it like back in the like old the school old Internet days. porn days. So yeah. I'm going to take one hot picture. And every time you pay five bucks, you get one like quarter inch of it, basically. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's just good business. I, love it. I think I actually am going to do it, but I actually have to like take the photo. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> get it, uh, figure it out. It's beautiful. Um, can I paint a picture of like how picturesque Alaska looks right now? Please. She has this amazing banana leaf backdrop. You have like a, a, a tiger mock tiger. turtle. Yeah, mm-hmm. tiger mock turtle with like a gold chain. Your hair mm-hmm. is on point. Are you wearing uh, makeup right now? I can't tell if you have a concealer or something on because your skin's beautiful I, always. You know, I j- I. I think it's just I turned up retouch my appearance on uh, or uh, touch up my appearance on Zoom. Mm-hmm. Oh I just God. turned it up really high. No, yeah. I'm wearing I'm wearing so much makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I have been using the touch up my appearance feature a lot, and I can just say that now my front case <laughs> facing camera on my phone is a nightmare, even more so than before. It's oh, really horrible. Like showing every pore. I got the new iPhone and I was like, how could you do this to me? I don't want to see the uh, medical examiner's like view of my skin. Exactly. Like at a certain point, we really have to call it quits on the resolution. We don't need that much resolution. No, it's, you're absolutely right. I'm getting a exactly. fucking iPhone 4. I'm, I'm giving up and I'm going back. Yeah. I'm Frank, going back I, to the Nokia with the, the Blackberry. Snake. I don't need yeah. to take me back. That's what I want more than anything. Ugh, that brick. Uh, it was with me through so much. I dropped that thing in a hot tub like three times and it survived. Wow. It was amazing. <laughs> so 
Alaska, tell us about this comedy special that you just had come out. It looks like you're doing a bunch in it. Um, It's a one night only engagement. I'm do. You know what? I'm doing the absolute most in it, and (laughs) I should have just. I should have just stood there and told jokes, uh, but I'm a drag queen and I'm really extra. So I was like, okay, we're going to do music numbers. Um, We're going to have a drag contest. My friend Jeremy's going to do crystal singing bowls. And like, we're just going to do it. Oh, so we had to do like, we had to do it all because I'm extra. And I'm also not a comedian, uh, shockingly. (laughs) Um, I'm a drag queen (laughs) who dabbles in humor. And so I was like, I can't just stand there with a microphone that's what real comedians do well you that's know what and hard. we appreciate that because you do see people that do that that aren't comedians <laughs> <laughs> I mean that shit can be rough yeah I love it though I love all the I love the spectacle yeah yes. add it all in there who cares that's what we're here for I mean comedians are boring so it's true. no I mean I have so much respect for comedians like that is that is literally so hard I I am literally a, a drag I'm like I, I'm a sight gag okay I, like I don't I don't have to it's it, I really have so much respect for comedians who can who can fucking do that I do think oh I mean I think part of the reason drag race is such a popular show though is because like drag is an art form that does require you to be so much more than even a triple threat and you have to be good at shit that kind of doesn't have to do with each other like, I feel like if you're a comedian, like, yeah, of course you can, like, write sitcoms because you can write a joke. But, like, right. the skill set to be able to, like, be really good at makeup, but then also, like, improv right. and doing the splits, it's, like, so disparate. <laughs> <laughs> it is really wild. It is a lot. And, like, it's very rare. I mean, even on, like, even on, like, Top Model and stuff, it's, like, mm-hmm. you're, you're still you're still kind of being dressed and you're still, like, you're sitting in the makeup chair and you're being... But on, like, Drag Race, it's, like, okay, do your own hair and makeup, um, bring your own <laughs> outfits, and, um, and then also we're going to, like, light you on fire and make an outfit out of flip-flops. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Yeah. <laughs> so while I haven't done that technically, I do feel like I've done comedy sets that felt like that. So it does feel right. emotionally. <laughs> Same feeling. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And where everyone is expecting you to handle everything, too. And you're like, great. Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the room is yours. That's how I feel. I used to have a joke about it. but And, and God bless, like, I can't wait for in-person exercises classes to return. But my pet peeve in L.A. is these classes that cost, like, 50 bucks a pop. And then at the <laughs> end, they hand you a paper towel and a spray bottle. It's like, I just paid $50 for a <gasps> Pilates class. So I'm not. Wait, are you no. asking them to wipe you off? Or no, you they for? want no, no, no. you. You have, want to clean, you to clean your mat. you have to clean your oh. mat and your whole works. But it's like, what the? F- I- no. <laughs> <laughs> what is the fifty dollars covering? Exactly. I guess just no. your brand. No. No, 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 I don't know. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's just to say that you went to Orange Theory or whatever. Yeah. I guess it so you can awkward, like take the picture. It's an awkward moment because everyone's watching each other. Like I'm watching who's wiping your shit down, and you're exactly. like kind of yeah. keeping track. People are handing out the little, the you know, mm-hmm. the little wipes, and it's just kind of like we're all doing this. Okay, yeah. we don't. I, we shouldn't be, but we are. <laughs> honestly, it's gross, but I do respect the bitch that's just like no. And they just put their dirty map back up on the wall and they walk out. I every once in a while you'll see that. And it's just like, move. you know what? You hero. You've like stood on the hood of an ex's car, but in this moment, I love to see it. God, I haven't been to an in-person class in a while. It's just hard because everyone in LA is just so hot. And it's like I know. Why are you hot at a workout class? Fuck you. This is where I go to get hot. I'm not hot here. Leave oh me alone. God. I can't. I can't work out in public. I can't look at. I can't have people looking at me working out. Really? I, I have. I don't mm-hmm. know why. I can't do it. I've never. I've never gone to a, an in-person workout class. I. I know they exist. Wow. Yeah. That's all. That's the extent wow. of it. <laughs> when you live, you live in LA, right? Or New York, mm-hmm. LA, and you've never. So like, surely you've been. Uh, people have been tempted to coerce you into going to one. No. Really? Uh, no. I don't do it. Drag No, absolutely not. No. I do it in the secrecy and privacy of my I, I will never take a fucking selfie like I'm working. I'm at the gym. Here I go. No. No. Well, also like the hours are very incongruous I think with probably what I would assume a drag queen schedule is like because they're usually either done by 10 a.m. or they start at like 7 again and it's like no 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 I like wake up at like 4 or 5 yes <laughs> ideally I mean yeah. in the in the old days I bet you you're, you're you're such a powerhouse at this point that I'm sure you've like 
have an assistant that's like, here is your orange juice and a muffin at noon. And like, let's <laughs> what get your day is going. This, Randy? I don't, like, I don't. In 1980s Have commercial you seen breakfast? this smoothie? I don't know what breakfasts are. It's a fucking nightmare over here. <laughs> oh, my God. First of all, I love that you imagine that my life is that. I wish I had a fucking assistant to give me a fucking muffin. Guess what? No, I'm racing around. I'm, jump, I'm bouncing off the walls by myself completely. It is. It's like a drag race challenge. No, yeah. not to get myself dressed. And then I'm the tech person and then I'm the lighting rig. Mm-hmm. And no, yeah, I'm doing it. No. But um, I would love to. I'm taking applications for assistance, actually, on your recommendation. <laughs> Most important skill is can you bring orange juice in a muffin? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What a beautiful you got to squeeze that shit, though. That's some, mm-hmm. We need some some muscles to be put into that orange juice. Don't fresh, give me some fresh, Tropicana. Fre- yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah who's fucking with Tropicana when we got Simply in these stores too you know what I mean oh that's oh, true very, that's I mean I think girl. that is what yeah we think I think like when you're starting out hustling and in, in something like drag or comedy you are like yeah those late nights and stuff and now it's when you're trying to like run your own empire it is just like your schedule's fucking crazy and you're not going out you're just like i need to like try and be an adult and get eight hours of sleep so that i can maintain being a person <laughs> oh, it's- Oh, it's completely that. I'm like 10 o'clock rolls around and I'm like, oh, yes, it's bedtime. Oh, yes. Honey. <laughs> so it's like so now when like gigs start to return and I have to be like doing a show until two in the morning and then go to the airport. I don't I, I don't I don't know how it's going to happen. No, I, I don't Same. know. How it's going like, to I feel yeah. like collectively for performers, what happened is like we all came home and like kicked off our heel, heels in our bra and now the world's like now get back out there there's a party you have to be at and you're like i already fucking took off my bra no right exactly <laughs> yeah exactly no i mean i yeah i feel like i aged so many years during this and it just like i became like a housewife and now i'm like excuse me like going out after <gasps> 7 p.m no you gotta make a I housewife know. a hoe again <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please uh... <laughs> save us. Have save there us been um, have there been like drag Zoom shows? Because there's been a lot of like drag comedy shows. So I don't know if like that's been a thing that's happening at all. Um. Yes. I mean, you know, the world ended on a Tuesday, and then drag queens on a Wednesday were like, "I have a show on on Zoom <laughs> on uh, yeah. Twitch. We are also the same Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's great. No, yeah. dra- it's it's very inspiring to see how adaptable drag is. It's mm-hmm. sure. very very inspiring, and I you know, and, and I love it. And you know, it's hard for for us, you know, as performers because it's like. Oh, so every every place that you work at is shut down now, and you're also last on the list to come back. Mm-hmm. Yep, we feel that yeah. we're in the hard. same boat yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And we need it the most because we're like sensitive people, and we need our art. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's all right. Whatever. This is why I'm in a community college again. <laughs> but we really do. We really yeah. are. Ne- it's it's very. I was talking to my friend Nick about this, and he was like, he was like, it it's it's very uh, easy to feel like shit during this because you're being told that you're not essential, whether you're an entertainer, or a drag queen, mm-hmm. or a comedian, or whatever. But the truth is, it's like I wouldn't. I know that. I wouldn't have gotten through all of this past year if it wasn't for Drag Race on the TV Mm -hmm. and Drag Mm -hmm. Queens on Instagram Live and, like, all of that. So, like, it is essential. It makes the world, you know, less, like, horrifying and terrible. Exactly. I mean, yeah, laughter is the best medicine. And, yeah, a luxury, once you get used to it, is essential anyway. So, people are... Exactly. (laughs) Thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. Where's the first place you're going to like travel once it's safe? Do you have a, d- a dream place? Oh my god. Well, I don't I don't know, but the first thing I want to do when it's safe to do so. Well, you know what? Actually, I'd love to go to fucking Australia because they have never heard of COVID. They <laughs> they've forgotten that it even happened. They're just like down they're dancing in nightclubs. They're just like it doesn't exist. So I want to go to Australia and I want to dance in a nightclub to Chromatica and mm. maybe possibly be on drugs while I'm doing mm. it. <laughs> that sounds really nice. And thank you yeah. for reminding me about Chromatica because I feel like I was really into it for a couple of days and I forgot not to keep, I need to keep listening to it because that album is such a fucking bop. 
It really is. It bangs. It bo- And you know what will be a, a good reminder is if you ordered merchandise uh, from the Lady Gaga store, it probably still hasn't come. So when it does come, mm. um, uh, it, it'll be a reminder because it, it, they literally – the chromatica merchandise has taken like eight months. Oh, to- <laughs> Gaga, get it together! The I bring it up. It's not her fault. It's not her fault. It's not her fault. She has an assistant. She can see you in there, yeah, stuffing t-shirts yeah. into mailers. And- <laughs> what do you guys? She think- takes it to the post office. What do you exactly. guys think Lady Gaga has for breakfast? Now I can see an orange juice and a muffin there. Um, I could too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could mm-hmm. too. I, yeah, keeping it humble, out of the gate, on the run. I could see, you know. I could see her being very Malibu, very green juice. Like I was gonna, Ooh, yeah. yeah, I was gonna say mm. a smoothie or something mm-hmm. like that. I think she oscillates depending on a mood. I think there's several options available in that fridge. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, not to speak for Lady Gaga, but <laughs> <laughs> there could be a million options in that fridge, and it just yeah. takes one. <laughs> oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh. No man. Yeah, we we just did a like a Patreon hangout last night with a couple of uh fans and we had two one was from Australia and one was from New Zealand. And they uh-huh. were, were like, So how's it going? They're like, Oh yeah, it's great. Been fine. I mean we did we did just have to lock down for three days because there were a couple of cases, but now everything's okay again. And I was like, Imagine, imagine just a country that could just be like, Okay, everybody stay inside for three days and now we're okay. <laughs> Imagine. I mean, imagine. Yeah. It's very okay. happy for Okay. Them. And I'm sure I'm <laughs> sure it was mostly policy that got Australia in that place. But if you've ever mm-hmm. like partied with Australian people, those are like hardy people. <laughs> oh yeah, they'll get it together. <laughs> so are you saying they'll their hardiness is what got them through? I'm saying it's not not what got them through. Okay. Yeah, I do. I thought you were maybe saying like it's conspiracy because it's like we know they want to party, so they were not staying inside. Oh, could be that too. No, but they just, they're like I don't know. I feel like you always meet an Australian when you're staying in a hostel. Like they're just kind of mm-hmm. always like out and about and like being wild and being adventurous. And like I just they just feel like people who can withstand a lot of infection and they stuff are. like that. They're well, very that's strong. true. Yeah. Well, I think when you get three months off a year to like explore the world and experience things in yourself, mm-hmm. it's like you're. The, the color comes back to your face because you feel alive. You're not chained to a desk. It's a beautiful, right. you know, you do feel alive. Wait, they get hearty. they get three months off a year? Yeah. It's like, it seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just making this up? Oh, I just totally they supported do get, you, like, Brandy. A... I was like, yeah. <laughs> no, it's like, it, it's it, like what I used to drive for a lift for a few years. And it, every time I would pick up Australians, which is often, they'd be like, oh, yeah, I have like the next three months off just to like ex- explore. Yeah. So I don't know if that's all Australians, but it was like. All the ones that I would ever lift, they'd be like, yeah, I like I'm in the United States for a month and a half and then I'm going to go to South Africa for a month mm-hmm. and a half and just, you know, just see what the world is like. Yeah. And I'd be like, what? How how do I be you? Yeah. How could I? Wow. How so, could I, yeah. Maybe this yeah. Uh, this collective immune system from all this getting in Brandy's lift and going all over the world oh, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> led them to <laughs> the yeah. coronavirus. It was a real like a uh, reverse. Um, oh shit! What's the Disney theme park where you see all those countries? Uh, Epcot, Epcot Center. Yeah, my lift at a certain oh. point felt like a reverse mm-hmm. Epcot, where I was like the center point, and then just different people would be like, "And now you take me to." <laughs> it, you know the, the depressing part: Swedish people would come and they would want to go to IKEA, McDonald's, and the comedy store. Uh, and sometimes oh. wa- Walmart. They were like, "We want to see a Walmart." We yeah. heard. Oh my god! That's what other people these. think of us is Walmart. <laughs> of course, they want to see Walmart. <laughs> and I don't blame them, frankly. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> I like that answer, Alaska. That you want to go to Australia to like party and stuff because I feel like exactly they like they kind of haven't you know had to deal with it as much. They've kept their shit on lockdown. I don't want to go. There's people who are like, yay, Disneyland. But I'm like, I don't want to go to Disneyland right now. It's still like creepy. No. Like, I need to wait until America's a little no. has their shit together. <laughs> yeah. No, that's <laughs> actually that Disneyland should be the last on the list to fucking reopen. We should open drag clubs before we open. Fucking yeah. So Disneyland, you're telling us Disneyland we're less is- essential than Disneyland. Come on. Disneyland is popping. It's popping off. It's going on right. It's open now. I think it is. Yeah. 
Yeah, it nev- the one in Florida never closed. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> well, and like no, no, no. at Disneyland, they don't even have like I feel like they go through such great pains to make you feel like the outside world is not inside. Like, isn't the whole point yeah. of Disneyland that even the trash cans have Mickey Mouse on them? So like, right. how can you enjoy that experience when we're living in the COVID of it all? Like, I'm not trying to have like a plexiglass wall in the middle of Splash Mountain, you know? No, I don't know how. Well, I I will say, I think this is our second podcast where we threw a little bit of shade on Disneyland, and I'm a little nervous. For the Disney's oh. going to shut it down. No. <laughs> come for That's me, Disney. True. Fucking try it. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying Disney, but I think Disney stands might come yeah. for us. And we I need will to be put aware. it out there. I've said many times I love Disneyland. I, I did ecstasy at Disneyland, and it was like the best night of my life. <gasps> really? <laughs> yeah, do it. Do they have drinks at Disneyland <laughs> they, or no drinks? They just started. They're opening a bar they, right now. Yes. They yes. knew wow. that people were like, see, all right, now. we got to be realistic here. Yes. See, now I'm like, okay, maybe I could see. <laughs> <laughs> that was always the thing. It's like, wait. So all the things that I hate from the outside world, mm-hmm. waiting in lines, um, loud children, families, groups, large groups of people, all of these things are concentrated into one place where alcohol is forbidden. <laughs> Keep me far away. <laughs> Keep me far away from this place. No, not fun for me. I will say one of my favorite sights in the world is a child at the end of the day at a theme park where they're just <laughs> in a stroller <laughs> sobbing and just prostrate Exhausted. just because they just have seen too much and they're just like, <laughs> that's, that's me upon entry. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the internal drugs first. They did, you know, take them right. in. Yeah. You're set. <laughs> Um, Fucking beautiful. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. You know, it's been a tough year, a tough year plus, I think, for a lot of us. Let's all do a mental health Mm -hmm. check-in. I think that therapy is, you know, super helpful for everything going on in your life. I think everyone should do therapy. That's where better help comes in. It's customized online therapy. They offer video phone and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So it's just right in your pocket, baby. They make it so easy. And what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. So it's just a place to kind of talk about whatever's going on. If you're feeling anxious, if you're stressed, if you just need someone to vent to, it really is just a place where you can have a safe space to just work through stuff. Yeah, BetterHelp is it's it's awesome. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. If you're having issues with motivation, depression, anxiety, 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 if you're ha- if you want to talk to your therapist about being able to say the word anxiety, <laughs> honestly, BetterHelp is there for you. If you want to battle your temper, if you want to figure out why can't you say words like anxiety, Talk to a therapist over at BetterHelp and join the millions of people who are seeing what therapy is really all about. And it may or may not be for you, but it's worth looking into because you are your greatest asset. It's true. I love it. I would definitely recommend everyone goes to therapy. I saw a tweet the other day where somebody was like, sometimes you start out thinking you're not going to say anything. And by the end, you're just a blubbering mess. You have no idea what you're going to tap into. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Give BetterHelp a shot. Lady to Lady is sponsored by BetterHelp and our listeners get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash lady. That's better com slash lady. Hey, we're all busy these days, but you know, I still love to cook and that's why I love HelloFresh so much because they send fresh pre-measured ingredients and amazing seasonal recipes right to your door. So everything's just right at your fingertips. You don't have to worry about a thing. Just have some nice time in the kitchen with yourself and voila, you have a beautiful meal. Absolutely. HelloFresh offers over 25 recipes to choose from each week from vegetarian meals to craft burgers and extra special gourmet options. And there's something for everyone to enjoy with all recipes designed and tested by professional chefs, nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. You can try meals ready in 20 minutes or less, lightning prep recipes and quick breakfasts and lunches. Perfect for your busy schedule. Yeah, and I gotta tell you, Sean does not like to cook, but when these HelloFreshes, he's getting, he's embracing his dinner chef i'm sitting there like a princess while he makes me spaghetti and flatbread and it is fabulous the other day i was sitting up here working and i could hear sounds downstairs of being and i was like i know he's making hello fresh because that is the, the thing he will he will put in the effort to make exactly. <laughs> so it feels very good exactly Absolutely. so go to hellofresh.com slash 12 lady and use code 12 lady for 12 free meals including free shipping that's HelloFresh.com slash 12Lady and code 12Lady 
for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lady to Lady. I'm Brandy. I'm Babs. I'm Tess. And we're here with Alaska Thunderfuck. Hi. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> Hello, caller. <laughs> Now, we got some, like, very serious um, questions to ask you, yes. so we're going okay. we're gonna to roll, okay. the, roll the theme song. Business. Business. Please be advised. Questions. Business questions. Are we moving the needle? <laughs> We've got some business. Pull up a chair. Would you like some water? Business, business questions. questions. Okay. Oh, no we're <laughs> That's a hot track. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty it's fun. just Pretty so fun. embarrassing, and we just don't have the wherewithal to make new ones. No, and just... I think that no, they're perfect. I we love don't them. have to I play disagree. it either. Them. We could drop it in, but we like to sit here awkwardly and like stew in our own. We like to force stink. the the guests to be a part of it. Yes, they I didn't... like it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm, I'm a big fan of Alaska. Um, tell me your biggest weakness. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, I would like to thank all of the hosts of this podcast, Lady to Lady, um, Babs, Brandy, and Tess. I would like to thank you very much for having me. Uh, in question and answer portion, in answer to your question, <laughs> what is my greatest weakness? I would have to say my greatest weakness is that I care too much. Uh, being someone who cares as much as I do, it can be very difficult and taxing, but I believe that the work and dedication that it takes to make the world a better place is ultimately worth it. Thank you. I am contestant number 73. Wow. Alexis Thunderstorm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd say hired after that. Yes. That's uh, very, very <laughs> professional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. Our, our, our question and answer is not very long. Uh, <laughs> well, but on the flip side, if that is your greatest, your biggest weakness, what do you consider your biggest strength? Oh. Oh, my God. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um... Well, what is my actual greatest weakness? Not, not well. Yeah, yeah. There, I don't know. There's so many. I'm rifling through <laughs> the, yeah. the frailties, insecurities. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I, don't know. I love. It. No, there's so many. I'm like I'm like insecure and I'm jealous and I'm sad and I'm angry and I'm like, you know, like all those things that just mm -hmm. like it's like Blanche Devereaux says it's like it's like feeling magenta because it's a combination of all the it's like you're you're green with envy but you're also blue but Oh, you, I love uh, this. You, you're afraid but you wouldn't say you're yellow. And so <laughs> yeah. it's like so it is like I, and I guess it comes down to like I guess my like the way to remedy that would be like meditating more, which I do a little but I should probably do more to just mm -hmm. like sort of sit back and like look at the swirling madness yeah i i feel like meditation is good but yeah like I, i'm sure it does in the grand scheme of things help but sometimes i'm like okay so i'm now i'm just aware of it no. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. yeah it's being able to say hey this is being able to like diagnose why something is happening is half the battle well i think i think, yes. I think knowing yeah. the bad or whatever i don't want to call them bad parts of ourselves but you know the weaknesses is good mm -hmm. but at some point it's just like okay that's what i am i don't fucking know. Um, it's like yeah i'm not necessarily gonna be able to change that like i have to accept my weaknesses too and accepting them and also uh and also another weakness oh now i'm on a roll um <laughs> i'm also horrible at communicating um and when it comes to like important things or if i'm feeling insecure or whatever like communicating it is also something that is immensely helpful is like it evaporates it as soon as you have a conversation like about it but getting to the point where i where i have the conversation is literally such an uphill battle for me and something i I'm constantly like trying to is it because you can't at? express it or because you don't want to like have the conversation I don't want to have the conversation 
Yeah. Uh, the slight, the, and even though I know, I mean, it's insanity because I know that it will make me feel better and I know that it is the solution. And, but I just am like too much of a coward to do. <laughs> well, I think sometimes difficult conversations too, like there's this practical aspect of like, there's never a good time. And so, like, yeah. it's yep. going to feel like this yeah. weird premeditated yeah. thing if it's something that you clearly have been wanting to talk about. So, like, I mm-hmm. find it can just be, like, literally, like, hard to find a time to do it. It's hard to schedule it. Hard to schedule yeah. <laughs> Well, it, it is. is. You know, when yeah. you're, yeah, when you have those situations where you've been, like, having an argument in your head with somebody, it's like, mm-hmm. how am I supposed to present this to Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah. they're just having pancakes. Like, they don't know. Yeah. <laughs> right. They're just having their muffin. Right. And you're like... You're like, I just need to talk to you about this conversation we had three years ago where you hurt me. And you're like, yes. I find that a visual aid usually helps. If you pull out a poster oh, right. of some oh, kind, okay. they're like, oh, OK, we're, oh, we're right. in for something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it can definitely be hard, especially like, you know, I feel like a lot of performers have like a people pleasing part of themselves, too. It's like we want to mm. make people feel good. So like mm-hmm. putting ourselves first in order to make people feel like uncomfortable in a moment goes against every compulsion that we have that to to be true. on stage so That's it's so like true. it's hard to get yeah. over that place you know um okay yeah. but then alaska what are your strengths what's your greatest strengths <laughs> um uh, i guess i'm sort of uh i don't um I don't worry about like I've always sort of run by the um the philosophy that like it's better to um to have something done than have something perfect. Mm-hmm. So like I have mm-hmm. I generally have no problem being like it's good enough just put it out in the mm-hmm. world, which I think is That's something great. It's, it's something that a lot i mean it and and myself as well but sometimes but like it is very like i don't know is it good enough it's not it's not perfect it's like the i know that i i know that i've had um i've had success at just saying yeah oh, what if i just fucking do it mm-hmm. you know which i guess is good Totally. I think well, that's and, great. Yeah. No, I think that's a great skill. I always yeah. like I always think like with the finished product of anything there a are going to be things wrong with it and people are yeah. going to have shit to say. So there is like a certain point, like I'm fine with people saying these things being wrong with it. Cause you might change it and then some other shit's wrong with it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's nice too, because you're not like, I, I mean, like I've, I can definitely suffer from pretty hard perfectionism sometimes, which ends up me beating myself up, which is you become right. like, you don't, you become inert and you don't move. So it's like right. being able to just be like, I'm done. You aren't saying shitty shit to yourself. You're just like, nope, that's it. On to the next thing. And it like allows you to actually continue being productive about things. Yeah. It's a huge strength, I think. For I, sure. Yeah. I was having like talking with my therapist about some stuff and, and I was just like, oh, I don't know if I worry if this thing's going to be bad. And she was just like, yeah, so what? Right. Yeah. What if it is? And I was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> she was like, yeah, and then you'll just move on. You'll do something else. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. My life doesn't end after whatever this thing is. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's great. That's a great, I mean, I feel like that's an amazing quality to have because, yeah, I think so many of us get stuck on, you know, perfectionism. So, yeah. And it's been really hard, like being, uh, being like sort of trapped in the house, which I think has triggered, or it's yes. triggered uh, my my like insecurity and sort of given me more time to sit and think and ruminate. And so, like all the things that are just trapped in my mind are just like there. Mm-hmm. And so it has been a struggle. And so it's like it's like getting the muscles going of like, nope, just fucking do it and move on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I can do it. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, yeah, that's where obviously, yeah, not being able to perform on stage like really hurts because that's just the ultimate. <gasps> like, ugh, it's uh, it's out there. You have to like it's your turn to go up. You have to fucking go up. Like no matter what, like they call your name, you gotta yep. do it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you seem like such a confident performer, Alaska. Though, do you like? Do you feel confident when you're on stage, or was that? Did you fake it till you made it? Like, I feel confident when I'm on stage. Mm-hmm. Because it is, it is like a trust fall. I I think uh, um, uh, 
it, it because you're like you I I get so scared beforehand and I'm like oh my god and and then you get out there and the ball starts rolling and it's like okay this is working all right yes I know how to do this I I've, I've been doing this for a long time mm-hmm. I, 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 okay I can do this mm-hmm. and and having that like taken off the table and not having that I think it really has made me like very like much more insecure than I have been in since I was like a child mm, for because sure. Because it's like, and you can't replicate it with fucking social media. I mean, social media is a fucking God, no. garbage dump. <laughs> yeah, I fucking hate it so much. And I'm so bad at it. <laughs> and I stay away from it because it makes me feel so bad about myself. Same. And so therefore, mm-hmm. I'm not good at it. And so it's like, I just, can I just have a room of people and a microphone? Mm-hmm. Please. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just yes. Give me that. Yes. All of that. Like, yes. Preaching all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's. I think that's what's been so hard is we've kind of had to replace it with social media this year, and it's just it, everyone's a fucking asshole, and you're getting no yep. release, and it's just mm-hmm. like, no. what is yes. this? This is not a substitution. No, we all no, went from like all. Marlboro Reds to like some shitty blue vape. <laughs> 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 it is. Uh, oh. oh my god, I can't wait to go back. Yeah. I can't okay. wait to go back to just performing so much that I'm so busy that I forget that I never use fucking Instagram. <laughs> yes. I do that too. Yeah. And I don't think that you're supposed, like, I think you're supposed to care about social media, but I have just kind of quit. Like, I kind of, good. I, I'm over it, but you need it? Yeah, I don't that's know. good. Why do you? Is it? I feel like you need it. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Um, do I mean... it. Quit. <laughs> Hang it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is is Instagram the one that you find the most toxic, like or, or like that gives you the most anxiety or? Um, uh, yes, yes, I do, yes, I do, because it tells you how many people, um, how many people like it, mm-hmm. yeah, and how many people like um all of my contemporaries things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, everyone hates me. I'm a piece of, sh- I'm a piece of shit. I'm a piece of shit and I'm ugly and no one likes me. And oh my God. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. I wish they had an option to be able to just be like, look, I don't care who likes it. I don't just like, let me just post it and then to avoid. Well, but of course care. we yeah. care. That's the problem. Even if we had the right. option, I don't think I would take it because there's some sick oh, part of me that wants to see the hearts. Oh, in a heartbeat. I would just be like, nope, this is I, I like the thing I'm putting out. I don't care. Here's what you our think new sharks. It. It's called Black Hole and you just post it and you never see any response. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> and also the thing about it is, is like, I don't like what I'm putting on. It's like I have wait, I have to sit here and take a picture of myself mm-hmm. and I have to do. Do I, what face do I do? (laughs) This is not art. This is just doing it so that I am putting things on my thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is not, this is trash. Yeah. And, and I'm hoping that people like my trash. It's not something I care about. It's not something I worked hard on. Mm -hmm. It's just like a thing to maintain this thing that I hate. So it's like, fuck. I fucking hate it. For sure. And those photos are also like <laughs> taking that moment out of their lives and they should be thinking why they need to have a comment in the first place too. It's like if everyone just right. like actually had a void of like time right. to just sit and think for themselves as opposed to like scrolling and judging. It's like, no, 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 just like Ugh. why? But like, what about you? You're, you're a creator too. There's something inside of everybody to put out right. there. Yes. Mm. All right. Next yeah. business question. Oh, okay. okay. Um, okay. Alaska, sell me this pin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, it has been, you know, it has been described as a pen, um, but I mean, it could also be described as a pencil. Um, <laughs> you see, the the feature of this this particular pen is that it's made of wood. Uh, this is balsa pine. Um, it's a really, uh, which is a sturdy wood, um, and it's lined inside with lead. This is number two lead, Ooh. so you can use it on tests. You can use it on quizzes, standardized <laughs> tests, um, college admission quizzes that you're taking um, by by yourself when someone is um, taking pictures of you to make you look like you're on the rowing team. You can get into <laughs> Harvard, Stanford, any of the big five. Wow. You can get in with this pen and, listen, we all make mistakes, okay? Mm-hmm. Listen, we've all made mistakes, okay? But I'm telling you, if you make a mistake with this baby, 
You can erase it. You see this rubber? It's featured <gasps> with this rubber mechanism on the end. Uh, it just it looks like a little nubbin. And you take that and you rub it across your mark. It's as if it never happened. It's wow. erased. It's a, it's an eraser of sorts. Oh, my God. Uh, so that is why this pen is not only versatile, but I think you need it. If you have a void in your life of any kind, mm. this is the pen that's going to fill. Oh, wow. my God. Sold. Absolutely <laughs> sold. Absolutely a sold. A pen? Finally what I've been looking for in a pen. A pencil. A pencil. I am ready. <laughs> Did you just have like RuPaul challenge flashbacks that felt? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, and it's like the. Oh, and you have to like it's on the um, home shopping network. You have to be like, you know, even the kids can get into this, right? Oh, yes, the kids love this. So you have to like tie I it love into family. Home, I I used to love just sitting and watching that forever because like they just have to the vamping. They just hours mm-hmm. about the same so product. Good. Oh, I love it. They're so good at it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I went to college in uh, Philly, and Q- <laughs> QVC is there. And, like, oh, the wow. QVC people are, like, the, the uh, hosts are, like, weird minor celebrities in Philadelphia. So, like, they, like, are on parades and things. Berg. And you'd be like, oh, my God, Bob Bowersox is here. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Berg, uh, oh. That's hilarious. Or, like, a, or like Liza on Home Shopping. Oh. Home Shopping oh. Network. Oh. Liza, someone called in and they were like, Liza, hello, I'm a musical theater major. And she was like, <laughs> like that's what made her laugh. <laughs> Wait, I'm I trying to find. find but I did not know Liza did QVC. Oh, there's a few <laughs> amazing. There's a few amazing clips of her. Is she just like wasted the whole time? She was. I don't know if she was wasted, but she was on another plane of existence. Oh my god, I love her so much. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so 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 good. Yeah. Uh, the Liza Collection secret sequin jacket and tank set. Fucking There's beautiful. Some good oh shit my god. Too. There's good clothes. I need that. I just I just rewatched Liza with a Z a few months ago. Oh um, my god. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. You guys. Wait, is that the like one woman show? Kinda? It's a concert or... and like the first half it's like a cabaret and the first half. It's just like, you know, her doing songs, and then the second half is all songs from Cabaret. Oh, oh but it's work. like her in her prime, like right after she played Sally Bowles, and like, y'all, like the outfits, the dancing, it's like the hottest, sexiest, like most Liza oh. thing of all time. Like, you watch her in her prime, and you're like, she is just like, like she's so oh my good. God, she's like, it, it's just like, she's a, she's like a beast. Yeah. Yeah. She really is so talented and crazy. Oh my god. I just love She's her. She's just legs. She's like fucking oh, olive oil legs. Her. Just like Yeah. Yeah. And like when just so good. When do you see female performers like sweating like LeBron James? You know, she's out there just right. like Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait, I'm going to share Do you like the clothes? Huh? <laughs> yes. Do you like the clothes? Oh yes, I got um I got the blouse. The oh star. good. Oh good. Well, thank you so much for taking my call. It was a great thrill. Well, I, it was thrilling to talk to you, and I'll remember it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfection. Perfection. Oh, we're going to take another break and look at some more Liza. We'll be back in a second. <laughs> <laughs> We are all super busy these days, and Mm -hmm. it's really hard to stay healthy when you're busy, and that's why we love Daily Harvest so much. They're amazing organic fruits and vegetables right to your door. It's smoothies and oat bowls and just like flatbreads and just delicious, like really healthy food that's super easy. Yeah, Yeah, I love this. You don't even have to like take a break from like going. You don't have to go get your lunch. You don't have to like call it in anywhere. It's right there in your freezer and it's like nice, healthy, yummy, delicious stuff. It's full of fruits and veggies and it takes no effort, but you're just eating really well. Yeah. um, Daily Harvest never uses preservatives, added sugar or artificial anything, including their recently launched almond milk, which is made of only almonds and a dash of sea salt. We love Daily Harvest. I mean, honestly, it's been getting us through the last couple of weeks uh, and it's uh, delicious. Absolutely. It's boy, as I call it, boyfriend fuel. Boyfriends mm. love it. They feel you know, so they, true. Yeah, love to throw it into the blender and just go for it. 
Do you want to get a vegetable into a man? Well, Daily Harvest is for you. <laughs> so get started today. Go to dailyharvest.com and enter promo code lady to lady to get $25 off your first box. That's promo code lady to lady for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com. That's dailyharvest.com. Hey, we're back in Lady to Lady. I'm Babs. I'm Brandy. And I'm Tess. And we're here with Alaska. Hi. We're going to do a lady problem. One more hot track. Work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if you have lady problems, you can send them to us at lady to lady comedy at gmail.com or you can call them in at 323 butt 30 That's that's right. oh, that's our phone number. <laughs> six butt thirty. Yes. Yeah. Six it's six butt thirty somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a voicemail this week. Let's do it. Okay. Hey guys, my name is Dan Paul, and I'm just calling with a lady problem. Um, I am sometimes a lady. I am also the drag queen Candy Shell. Um, and yeah, I, mm. oh, I, and this kind of has to do with Candy Shell. Um, I'm, I'm living in Honolulu with my husband. We've been married for six years, and, um, my doing drag and my kind of drag career has always been like sort of an issue with us and we're, we've been really struggling and he is not going to continue at his job next year. And so he might be leaving Hawaii and I don't know whether or not I should go with him. I, I, I've felt judged and not super supported for a good chunk of our marriage. And now I'm, uh, and now he's meditating and he's realizing that he's sort of been heaping all this judgment on me, but he's still not sure if he knows how to stop. And there's a lot of love between us and we're in therapy and I really hope that we work it out, but something in me, I don't know. I, I don't know if I need some kind of space or maybe I should stay behind for a little while because we would be moving in with his in-laws. Ladies, do you have any advice at all? I sure would appreciate it. Love you guys so much. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you, Candy Shell. And wow. I mean, I think the in-laws says it all. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that tipped the scale for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god there's so much going on in there uh, I mean well oh wow I mean well uh, uh, you know I can't be like on straight talk and be like uh, Dolly Parton and be like pretending to be a doctor and tell them <laughs> to get a divorce and then then they drunkenly show up to one of my appearances and say you you ruined my Wait, life did that happen? <laughs> In, in the, the movie, movie Straight, Straight Talk. Talk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you actually, um, we did we did have somebody once who we were like, oh, dump him. And then the boyfriend listened and like wrote his, yeah, his side of the like, story. He was like, actually. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It happens. Yeah, it does happen. <laughs> but like, well, okay. So I'm not going to say dump him because marriage, like I, I believe in like marriage and I believe in commitment. And I think that's, I think that's something that you've built together and you obviously have stayed together despite your, you know, seeing things differently when it comes to drag. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think sometimes you have to, um, you have to be away from something in order to like realize that you miss it. So maybe this is an opportunity. You let him go ahead, move in with his in-laws, you stay behind and you say, I'm going to be doing drag and I'm going to be fierce. And I'm going to be sickening. And then maybe, you know, 
maybe you'll miss him really a lot and maybe he'll miss you really a lot and be like, you know what? I don't care if you do drag or not. Like you should come back and be with me. So uh, maybe, or maybe you'll find independence and you'll be like, I don't need his fucking ass anymore. I, that's what, I, that's what I think you should do. I think that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you're th- this person sensing that they need some space. Like they're kind of like saying that yeah. in the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and I yeah. will say like, I do want to say this, like no matter what, don't like let your husband's view of drag approach your view of drag. Cause like you also have a responsibility right. to yourself and your relationship mm-hmm. with yourself. And like, that's clearly something that's mm-hmm. really important to you. And so like, I feel like his husband needs to accept that. Like in order to like love that person, he has to love like the whole person. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think I mean, it's also figuring out like where his issues come from. Like, is that internalized homophobia? Is mm. it like, you know, there's, there's a lot of different places of where that could come from that he needs to really understand you know what's going on there i i don't it didn't i I could see it also being a thing of like the lifestyle of being a performer can be tricky like if you're more of like a domestic person Mm -hmm. and you're in a relationship with someone who is out doing shows until two o'clock in the morning like maybe then it is a matter of like you guys need to start scheduling like breakfast dates or whatever but like no matter what i just want to say don't give up your shit just because you know your husband has a bad attitude about it no a thousand percent and it doesn't sound like i don't think yeah they're Mm -hmm. saying that but Totally. You, I, I really like Alaska's suggestion because it does, you definitely need a break of some kind. And, you know, whether that's ends up being like the nuclear option or not, you need to like see what it's like to have some space and let him go mm-hmm. and, and know that like you're going to be able to figure it out from there. It doesn't have to like be the end if he does end up going without you. You can kind of just see where yeah. you're at. Yeah, right. for sure. Lots of couples it seems to take like a little separation to kind of figure shit out sometimes. You know, that is, yeah. that is a thing. And it can bring you back together stronger or, you know, it's time to say goodbye and let that relationship evolve into to something else. You know, yeah. but yeah, I think it's I mean, it totally makes sense. I also feel like his husband might be relieved because this whole in-law situation might be much more doable if it's just the husband and not like the entire right. couple moving in with the parents. He, that's oof. true. I can't. <laughs> like, yeah. I can't. That's... I can't imagine. Yeah, yeah it kind of sounds like the right. best for everybody for right now to yeah. just <laughs> let him <laughs> like... go. Yeah, you can kind of do your own thing and see what that's like to not have that judgment around you. I mean, that's a lot like. That's right. the kind of thing that really fucks you up even when you don't know it, you know? So having that right. gone will probably be a relief that you didn't know and, and you can kind of see how you feel then. But yeah, but yeah, don't, you know, it's not, it made me, you know, sad. <laughs> I don't want you to be unsupported in your relationship. I mean, that's yeah. not okay. All, uh, also, all that being said, I have to say that drag is, a horrible, messy, like awful, like it, it'll ruin your house. It'll ruin your carpets. <laughs> There's gonna be glue and glitter everywhere. So, like, I kind of like I understand. Uh, be you know the husband not liking drag because drag like I, I it was really hard for my college roommate when I first started doing drag mm. he was like is this gonna be like all the time and we were really good friends he was like this is like a lot it is it's the crazy hours it's the lifestyle it's the like mess of it all it's the hoarding of the of the clothes that you have to do in order to do this crazy profession mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's not worth it I mean obviously it is worth it but it's also like hugely like the most inconvenient hobby and profession <laughs> to go into. <laughs> right. That yeah. makes sense. That's a lot to take on as a partner for sure. And depending on yeah. whether you came into the relationship with that too, if this is a newer thing that you're kind of like taking on, it's not, you know, obviously they should support right. you, but it's also like, whoa, this is a new thing I wasn't expecting or whatever. Right. So that can be a lot too. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would make... It's, like, almost like if I just brought home a cat without asking Sean. It's, like, (laughs) Elizabeth. Yes. Like, this is going to be a thing now. Deal with it. It's going to be a thing (laughs) For sure. Well, and I do think that also in relationships, like, no matter what everybody is doing, like, it is important to be, like, be mindful of the time that is your relationship time together. And I think Mm -hmm. it's like, you know, we're all performers. We're all, you know, inherently workaholics because of that to a certain degree. So it can Mm -hmm. be so hard to be like, okay, I need to just go on a date right now with you and just be with you in the moment and like not be 
thinking about all this other stuff and like answering emails, blah, 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 blah. It's like, you know, so also make sure that, you know, if you guys do keep working this out, you are both like making time like for the, you, you're, 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 you're loving that relationship as much as your drag career, you know, and putting that into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really important to remember. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's definitely an important thing. <laughs> and I am absolutely horrible at that. I, <laughs> I mean, I say all of this. It's 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 hard. It's a really hard thing to what, do. What do you guys think is the advice that you give the most, but like don't take at fucking all? Well, I think like I I, I was thinking yeah. about this actually when we were ta- when we were talking about um, having those hard conversations because a lot of the questions we get written into are like about having a hard conversation with somebody, and like right. the advice we give, I'm like I. I'd be hard pressed to see myself doing this half the time because it's really fucking difficult to have these kind of conversations. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I think like that when you're just like, yeah, just tell somebody, you know, like I said, like about the thing that hurt you from a long time ago or whatever, approaching yeah, someone right. about those when it's not like, and also especially like relationships are one thing, but friendships, like relationships, friendships are different because they're so like, they don't have that like end point that a relationship could have or something, you know, it's just like a whole different thing so right i think that's the mm-hmm. hardest stuff when i give it i'm like i don't know if i'll ever do this mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah i'm very bad at putting myself first i think often and i don't realize it either until later and then i'm like oh i thought i what had my best in, my best intentions at heart but i don't you know and right. like being cognizant of that i think is a is a big big thing that you know work i've worked on a lot mm-hmm. for sure yeah i think yeah. for me it's just like confrontation like, I don't like confrontation. No. So, yeah, anytime I'm like, yeah, you tell them that. But in reality, I'm like, yeah, okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, in meditating, too, I'm like, that's a thing that I'm like, oh, I'm sure I would, that would be great for me. But, like, I get one minute in and I'm like, okay, I got shit to do. Like, I just don't. I'm so oh, yeah. bad at, like, taking a yeah. breath. I just get too obsessed with, like, no, 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 I got other stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that a trip? Because, like, how could you not? It's crazy that it's so hard for all of us to literally just, we can't sit somewhere for five minutes, yeah. 10 minutes. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. I've started doing it. I just don't meditate. I just like sit, but I don't like, you know. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. is. It, it's, it's, and it's an entire like society and like everything is set up to make you feel like if you just are sitting there and like focusing on your breath, like that is like, people are like, well, you, you're, you look insane. You you look crazy. It's like, <laughs> yeah. no, yeah. like, mm-hmm. and, and also it's like, well, wait, so you're not doing anything. You're like, you're not working. Wait, you're, you're not working and you're not consuming someone else's work. Wait, <laughs> what is wrong with you? You're insane. You're crazy. It's so weird, yeah. but it is like the literal best thing you can fucking do is just sit there and listen to yourself breathe. But mm-hmm. it's it looks like you're, you know, I don't know. Or it looks like you're doing nothing. Like, I haven't been, yeah, social media, I've been so fucking busy that I haven't been on as much. And I'm like, I think mm-hmm. people think that means I'm not busy because I'm not posting about doing stuff. But it's like, but yeah. I am. I'm too busy to talk about. Exactly. <laughs> it's also okay if you're not busy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. But it, but it is hard. It's like we are we are set up where it's like our society wants us to believe that like our identity is our output or what we consume and it's like yes. if you choose not to do either of them then like do you have an identity right <laughs> well and then i worry too because it feels like oh is this a waste because i do have this like never-ending reading list and should i want to watch and like i've got yes. my highbrow shit and my reality shit right. i want to catch up on and it's like uh, right. is this a good use of this time when i could read this article or do this thing so i i struggle with that too a lot mm-hmm. i do the yeah and same to- thing yeah. And and I mean the answer is like it's it's literally even if it's like 10 minutes or 5 minutes I'm like I if I literally take this 10 minute break to keep myself from going crazy like it's not it's it's only going to help. It's only going to help mm-hmm. literally everything. Yeah. Yeah. And it's 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. No, like it's literally yeah. that's a, it's like it's it's free. You can do it anywhere. Yeah. It's life changing. Yeah. It changes your relationship with everyone else. It's like the most. It's kind of like yeah. water, right? Like, that, why is it so hard right. to drink water that comes out of the right. sink? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and for hundreds of thousands of years, it didn't. I mean, we have right. the best water of all of humanity at this point. Yeah, <laughs> I think about this all the time. I mean, I was talking yeah. with Tess about this, or was it on the show? Or I was just thinking about 
all the stuff that we yeah like when you know we had to work to survive like as cavemen or something and now we're just like I don't know, scrambling all the time and just making up shit that we don't actually need. We have a, a lot of us lucky enough to have the things we need to survive. So the rest is just kind of like the cherry on top, but we kind of have made it into like so unnecessary. So true. Mm-hmm. So true. Uh, well, well. Yeah. That said, it's that great, said, to, you know it's great to create content I'm with you guys. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say, sometimes it does pay to waste time because the other day I went impulse shopping and I bought like my favorite thing I've bought in a while. I bought a one piece black like unitard that I decided is going to be my uniform for the summer and I'm just going to wear different jewelry. And so I was really excited when I bought it. And when it showed up, and when I got to wear it the first day, which is all to say. <laughs> triple threat. That's Work. a triple threat. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, any last words for Candy Shell? I mean, I think, yeah, try to, you know, s- set him free and see what happens. Or set I yourself think so. free. Yeah. A little, sp- right, a little space. Right, because yeah, because sometimes you can tell people and tell people, but sometimes you have to show people, and it's like, oh, I'm so annoying. Okay, go over, th- go live with your parents, <laughs> and see how annoying drag is. <laughs> yeah, see what it's like when I'm not there for you to talk shit about the weird stuff your parents do. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Absolutely. Let us know how it goes, Candy. <laughs> Let's. Yeah. Um, listen to one last. I just want to hear another piece of Liza. I'm sorry. Well, no, I'm please. At her no, face. I've never apologized. I don't know what Play it's it. going to be. We're Let's just going to find out. Let's see what we got. Putting on everything that socks you in and everything. Mm-hmm. Again, you put this on and then you do what you want to do. <laughs> sit like you want to sit. Because all you have to do is really do, the, do this. That's and these it. These clothes look great. That's right. And your arms are important. Yes. <laughs> How about. <laughs> And your arms are important. They are important. I feel your like arms she's a poet. Are, you know how they make those like ur- those urban outfitter books of like Bob Ross? We need just a book of Liza on QVC. <laughs> it's true. It's Holy really, shit. Really good. Please. Yes, it's let's pro- make it. <laughs> <laughs> Liza. Beautiful. Um, um, well, Alaska, right. where can everybody find you and what you're up to now that we've talked about social media? <laughs> now, I know now that I've talked shit about Instagram and how I fucking hate it my Instagram is <laughs> um, it's at the only Alaska 5000 um, and I actually no I hate, I hate I hate posting selfies of myself but I do promote everything I'm doing um, on Instagram and you can go to alaskathunderfuck.com um, uh, and you can like find everything there as well so. yeah and i will i'm just gonna pimp you have really really cute merch my sister sent me a picture of her little pound cake brush i think it is oh, or mirror yeah. before i was podcasting oh, yeah. yeah so check out alaska's merch because it's cute as fuck get some alaska yeah, merch stuff. watch the yeah. extra special comedy special <laughs> on out tv and yes. uh, thank you so much for doing this it was great to meet you Thank you so much. This was so fun. Y'all are amazing. Aw, thanks. All right, everybody. We'll talk to y'all next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Three, two, three, six, but 30. Three, two, three, six, but 30 somewhere. Hi, ladies. Love the show so much. I recently discovered you through the Exactly Right Network um, and have been binging you ever since. Your show is exactly what I've been looking for in a podcast, and I just love it so much. Anyway, I've been binging past episodes, and I just listened to the one um, with Michelle Balloon from 2018, and Tess started talking about how she hates that Sean um, never wipes his dick, and he always has, um, like, a little bit of pee drip in his underwear. And then you guys went off on a huge tangent about how guys need to be better about this. And then Barbara made a joke about hearing the blow dryer go off in the bathroom um, when your man's in there. And I laughed so fucking hard because I shit you not, my boyfriend does that. He will use the blow dryer to dry off his dick if he has drip. So, anyway, I just had to share that little bit of information because I've seen him do that more than once. Also, pro tip to get rid of the dick drip, simply push on your gooch. Squeeze from the base of the shaft to the tip of the penis, and you will squeeze out any additional disc drippage you have. 
So I don't know if this is still a problem for Sean Tess, but if you want to subtly relay that information to him, um, yeah, I just thought I would, uh, you know, offer that little bit of helpful advice for y'all. Oh, my God. I love you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you for all the laughs. Bye-bye. Hi, ladies. Um, just wanted to say hello. This is Katie from Sacramento. Um, I also picked up skating during this time. I ate shit in my parking lot um, in the apartment complex and tore my favorite leggings, and I bought um, knee pads and elbow pads, and I haven't skated again. Um, but I also want to say that I am an ER, ER nurse, and don't worry. People have been coming into the ER with all their stupid shit all throughout the year. Don't you worry. Um, I had a lady who was, like, in her early 40s, and she came in, broke her arm because she was roller skating. And, yeah, a lot of the visit was just, like, helping her throughout her humiliation. Um, as far as casts, I feel like we mostly just, like, put splints on these days and tell you to follow up with the ortho. Uh, you can't really color on them or draw on them, so it's not super fun. But if I was an adult with a cast, I would still color on it. Anyways, I love you guys. Um, Y'all have been just a beacon of light throughout this time. Um, Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, We need you. Love y'all. Bye.